I'm going to talk about HTML links. So links allow users to navigate to different pages or content by clicking on text or an image. HTML links are also called hyperlinks, and we can make them with the A tag. So we say A to open up the A tag, href, so href is equal to, and then we set it to the URL or the path that we want to make our link go to. So we'll say HTTPS, and I'm going to link to a Wikipedia Wikipedia article here, uh, .org slash wiki slash ada. And then we close that, opening a tag. Then we can kind of put the text or whatever we want the link to be represented as inside the a tag. So we'll say ada here. And then we close the a tag. So slash a to close the a tag. Save that. And now we'll have a link here. And if we click on it, it'll take us to the Ada Lovelass Wikipedia page. And I don't know if you've ever heard of her before, which is kind of the first programmer, which is kind of a neat little thing. We can hit back then obviously to go to the previous page. And just, just to, for fun and just to kind of show you what's going on underneath the hood, basically, if we right click and go to inspect, that's gonna take us to Chrome DevTools. And Chrome DevTools lets us see things that are kind of behind the scenes in our web browser. If I click on the network tab here, this will show me what's actually happening when I click on a link. And what's actually happening is when we, when we go to click on this link here, you'll see that the page loads up. And what's going on is that when that page is requested, the browser is doing the request. It's making the request essentially to the internet for that page. When the page loads in, the browser also makes all kinds of requests for all the content on that page. And that's what all these things are here. And you don't really need to understand this, but I just think it's good to know what's actually happening when you make a link in terms of what's going on in the browser. So that's a, a link to what's called a absolute web address. So we gave a complete full address for this page here. And it's also called an external link because it's a link to an external website. We can also have what are called relative web addresses with our href attribute there. So we can have an, an address that is actually to local content, to content that is internal to the website that we are on currently. So rather than linking to an external website, we're linking to something that is internal. So let's make a page two. I'll just copy this. Let's make a page two. I'll call this uh, page two and I'll put it in a subfolder. I'll say, oh, we'll, we'll put it here for, to start. We'll say page two.html. And we'll call this page two. And I'll say here, page two, just so we know we're on page two. Okay. What I can do is because this is in the same folder, this is also in the desktop folder. What I can do is instead of giving that full address, I can give a relative address and I can just give an address that is just to this content specifically. Now, if I refresh this, We'll have a link and I'll, I'll change this to page two just so we know what it is, page two. So now we've got a link here to page two. And when I click on it, loads in page two. And that's called a, a relative link. Now, one of the things we can do with a, a relative link is we can actually have it, the, the document that we're linking to, we can actually have it in subfolders or in multiple subfolders. So for page two here, I could save this in a subfolder. So I'll save it underneath subfolder one, and then I'll make here, I'll make a subfolder two. So we're gonna basically bury it in a couple subfolders and I'll save it there. We'll call this uh, page two in subfolder. And now you can kind of see it's in subfolder one, subfolder two. I can build a relative link to that as well. And the way that I do that is I'm gonna say, here I'm gonna say subfolder one slash subfolder two slash page two dot html and that'll build a relative link now to that page two so i click back here and refresh this um, notice with the links here that initially they're blue like this and if i click on the link it'll turn purple i'll just talk about that in a second but i click on this page two here and now it's going to link to the page two in that subfolder and that relative link has been constructed. And what's going on with the link like this is that it's basically gonna say, from our current website, from our current directory, add this to it. And so, you know, we're here 
on this hard drive here. That's where the links.html file is that I'm using. And then this gets added to that. And so we get subfolder one slash subfolder two slash page two.html. Now these link colors here, if I go back, it's gonna be purple now. This is just something you wanna know about as well with links. So there's basically three basic states with links. One is unvisited, and that's gonna be when it's initially blue. Visited is gonna be when the link is purple by default. And that's for a link that has been visited, either because we've clicked on the link or because we've previously been to the page for whatever reason in our browser. The other state you can have with links is the, the active state. And that's actually when you're clicking on the link. So when you're clicking on the link, it's in an active state and it'll go red by default. And that purple, blue, red coloring scheme is just there by default. You can actually change that with CSS if you like. So let's add some other attributes to our links here. So let's make another link here. We'll make a link to Wikipedia, just the main site. And what we'll do this time is we'll add in a title attribute. So we'll say here, title, oops, title is equal to, and we'll say the free encyclopedia. Close that. And then we'll say here, Wikipedia, We'll close this there. Now, I kind of split things up on different lines here. You might want to do this if your tags are getting really filled with attributes. You might just want to split it up in different lines. It doesn't really matter that much how you do it, so much as you do it in a consistent way. But save this. And let's check out this now. Now we've got a link to Wikipedia. And with this title attribute, what that's going to do is it's going to add a title to it. So now if I hover over that link, this little pop-up box will come up and it'll say the free encyclopedia there. And that's a title attribute. The other attribute we can use that's pretty useful is sometimes we want to open our link in a new page. So if I click on this link now, it'll open up in the current tab. What we sometimes want to do is open up the link in a new tab. So to do that, we can use the target attribute. So we can just say here, we'll say target is equal to, and you say underscore blank. When you add in that attribute, target is equal to underscore blank, that's gonna have the effect now of opening that link in a new tab. So we we'll click on this, opens up the link in a new tab. Another thing we can do with links is they don't have to be text. Links can be pictures as well. So maybe we wanna make that a picture of Wikipedia to, to open up Wikipedia. So we'll just go find a, a Wikipedia image. We'll just say Wikipedia actually, and we'll do a Google image search. And this will come up with a bunch of things. We'll find one of these. This one looks, this one, uh, we'll, make, we'll make it a smaller one. We'll go for a smaller one. I'm just looking at the image sizes here. There's a, there's a reasonably small one. I'll right click and I'm gonna say copy image address. That's gonna give me the image address for that. So if I were to paste that in here, it'll give me this. It'll give me the actual image and that's the URL to the image. So what I can do here is instead of the text Wikipedia, I can put in image src is equal to that image, save that. And now what'll happen is on my site, the image will display. And when I click on it, it'll load up Wikipedia in a new page. And basically what we've done is we've just said, okay, instead of the texts, we wanna make the link an image instead. Another thing I wanna show you is just bookmarks with links. So these have all been links to external content, either external pages or even if they're internal pages in the sense that they're on the same website, they're still new pages altogether. One thing you can do is you can actually have links within a document using what are called bookmarks. And the way you set up a bookmark is you have to have an ID attribute in a tag that's gonna specify this is this particular section essentially, or this is this unique piece of content. And then you can then build links to that section with that unique ID. So here I'm gonna say H2 is equal to, and we'll just, do, actually we'll do a couple sections. We'll say H2 section one, and we'll make a bunch of sections of information. And I'll say P and I'll say, this is some content for this section. And I'm gonna make a bunch of big sections because the, the point of using bookmarks is when your page is really big, that you know somebody can't really find something easily just by scrolling through manually, you create these bookmarks that jump to this part of the page. So I'm gonna actually make 
a bunch of sections here. I'm going to make them reasonably long. That's why I'm putting in all these paragraph tags. And what I'll do is I'll make a whole bunch of these. So I'm going to make like, you know, 10 of these or something like that. We'll make a bunch of sections here. And then I'm just going to go through and I'm going to kind of, you know, name each one here. So I'll say section two, section three, and so on. And what it'll do is it'll now give me a nice long web page where I might actually, you know, have a justification to have bookmark style links that are going to jump to a different part of the page here. So there are 11 sections there, it looks like. Okay, that's pretty good. And if I load in my page now, I've got, you know, a lot of content here now. It's a pretty big page. I, may get, I might get lost if I'm looking for, say, section five in particular or something like that. So the way that the bookmarks works, like I said, is you have to give an ID. An ID, you can kind of think of, we'll cover it more in other videos, but an ID you can kind of think of as a unique thing, a unique identification for this tag. So if I say here for section five, I'm going to give this H2 tag here, this unique ID here, section five. What I can now do is make a link that's going to jump to this part of the page, section five here. So up here at the top of the page, say, I'll make a link and I'll say a href is equal to, and I'll say pound section five. I'll make it a link to section five. And then what it'll do, it'll give me this link that when I click on it, it'll actually jump to that section five. So click on this, actually jumps to that section there. And that's a bookmark link. And you can imagine if you had a, a massive page, you could have a bunch of links at the top, like a table of contents essentially, linking to particular sections. And just one more thing I wanna show you is from our other page here, if we go to the, the subfolder page, this page two here, if I wanted to make a link back to this original links page, I could do that. I just want to show you how to do that. And I want to show you that you can actually have a link that goes to a particular section on a page two. So if we go into page two here, let's say I want to make a link back to this page. If I want to make a link back to my original links page, I'm going to say a href is equal to, and to, to go back essentially, to go back a folder, because remember this is in subfolder one slash subfolder two, to go back a folder, what I'm going to say is dot, dot, slash. And dot dot slash essentially means go back a directory or go back to the parent folder of the current folder. So if I'm in subfolder two right now, this file, this file here, page two is in subfolder two. If I say dot dot slash, it means go back to subfolder one. I want to go back another subfolder. I want to go back to the desktop. So I'm going to say dot dot slash to go back another folder. And then I'll say links.html for the document. And then I can actually say pound section five here. And what this is going to do cumulatively is I'll say, I'll say links page, I'll say links section five. What this is going to do cumulatively is it's going to say, go back a folder, go back a folder, open up links.html and take me to section five. So now from my, my, my page two here, I can now click on this. What it's going to do is it's going to go back a folder, go back a folder. It's going to be the desktop folder. It's going to open up the links.html page. Then it's going to open up section five in that page. So click on this and we open up section five of the links.html page. And that's just showing you how you can actually open up a particular section on a page in your link as well, in your, in your link that links to another page as well. And that's, uh, that's the basics of links in HTML. Check out PortfolioCourses.com where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.